Good morning, um, Shalom. Uh, really appreciate uh, the non-trivial effort uh, to kick off the week this week with uh, the JNML conference. Thank you very much, Uri. So my name is Yaniv. Uh, I'm director of product and engineering at uh, Searchium. Searchium is part of uh, GSI, an American company, which acquired uh, an Israeli startup a few years ago. Uh, we basically develop in-memory compute for uh, analytics and machine learning applications. Um, I had the privilege of uh, building AI products from scratch at my uh, startup, DeepSea AI. Worked at AWS as a machine learning specialist, 50 different AI services. And uh, I think my biggest accomplishment is I have four boys. So we literally have a basketball team. Okay, so what we are going to talk today, so what are the trends and challenges uh, with LLM? Uh, how in-memory in -memory compute can tackle some of these challenges? Um, we will have a quick demo, and uh, if we will have time, we will have a bonus slide. Okay, in the last five years, something fundamental has changed the way we consume and use compute. You can see it in the right, on the right side. The compute in the last five years grew by 20x, 20x, but the memory IO, the bandwidth grew by only 3x. And as you can see in, the, in this uh, slide, this is a huge challenge. So we have a strong compute engine, but we cannot utilize or exploit it accordingly. And you know, the biggest challenge is models continue to soar in size, 7 billion, 175, hundreds of billions of parameters, maybe trillion, and huge chunk of time in large language model is not spent computing a matrix multiplies, but rather waiting for the data, for the layers and, and back and forth from the compute to the memory and so on and so forth. So based on our observations, what are the LLM infra challenges? As Dikla, I think, mentioned uh, uh, before. So we have known uh, challenges like hallucinations, et cetera, et cetera, but I think we can manage and solve these challenges, but we have, different type of infra challenges with LLM. The first one is poor flexibility with different number formats. What, what is number formats? Number formats is the way we use and communicate with the machine. It can be either when I trained my first uh, uh, computer vision algorithm, it was floating point 32. Then if we wanted to uh, improve the performance, so we uh, quantize to floating point 16, but today there are different number formats, floating point eight, integer, different type of integers, like for uh, integer uh, four, five, new concepts. Researchers are constantly working on new number formats in order to leverage the, the capabilities of the compute. So Microsoft and Meta recently uh, uh, published a, an interesting uh, paper where they are using a new number format. They call it micro exponent. We shared the exponent. So uh, researchers and developers are constantly, I guess you are probably familiar with this uh, uh, GitHub repository, uh, Llama, implementation of Llama uh, on a Mac. And you can see here they are constantly working different two, three, four, five uh, bit quantization, super popular uh, uh, GitHub repository, but this is not the only one. The second challenge is, uh, we call it the limited real estate utilization. So I I'm not sure if you are familiar with the architecture of GPU, but you have small compute units and compute units for each number format. So essentially you have like floating point 64, 32, int 8, et cetera, et cetera. But if we are training, for instance, uh, an LLM, we will use floating point 8, but the other uh, compute units will be unemployed. So this is a poor utilization of our 
and you can see it. I'm not sure that you are familiar. This is the architecture of um, probably the GPU that you are using. You can see here that you have like int 32. This is small compute units, floating point, et cetera, et cetera. But you can see here that when you are using or running training or running inference, you are using presumably uh, one number formats. And, and the third challenge that we observe is, as I mentioned, this is the memory wall. We have strong compute, but usually, and, and you can see it, and, and Dikla mentioned it earlier, the first challenge, or you experience it as a user, the first challenge is latency. So this is a huge challenge because we are waiting for the uh, data to go back and forth. Second challenge, in order to run training or inference, we need a cluster of instances, a fleet of instances. Uh, we're pay paying a lot of money to, to consume it. And, and we need a better way to uh, utilize the capabilities of LLM in terms uh, of infra. Okay, so what, what we are working on, what is in-memory compute? So the classical architecture, as you can see it, uh, on the left side, uh, is the classic von Neumann architecture uh, where you have a CPU and a memory and the communication between them. If you would like to run a simple function, you need to take it from the memory and so on and so forth. But this architecture is literally 80 years old and we need a different architecture or a fresh concept of newer architectures for LLMs. So this is the uh, our architecture. We call it APU, Associative uh, Processing Unit. Actually, the guy that invented it is here, Dr. Uh, Avidan. So you can uh, ask him later on. So essentially, APU exploit an either an hidden attribute of the memory. So instead of using the memory, there is an hidden attribute where you can read and write synchronously by leveraging different uh, logical operations. And once you can uh, use one logical operation like NED, you can implement all of the other logical operations, matrix mul multiplies, uh, et cetera. So it is based on a bit processor, millions of bit processors. So as you're probably familiar with CPU, we have like, we have like dozens of processors and with GPU, we have thousands of processors, but with this architecture, you have like millions, millions of processors. Okay, so what is it good for? Again, as I mentioned, so different uh, analytics and uh, AI applications, uh, big data search and gen AI, what are the capabilities and what is the added value so it is blazingly fast and uh, reducing significantly i will show you a benchmark uh, later on and super important right now uh, low carbon footprint okay so this is a benchmark of one of the applications that we are running uh, this is a benchmark that uh, was published by aws a few months ago and this benchmark is uh, for a vector search application. What is a vector search application? So uh, simple explanation. So vector search, we are using taking uh, unstructured data. It can be either text, image, uh, video, and converting it or represent, represent it as vectors, uh, as numbers. So essentially, let's take, for instance, uh, e-commerce. So they have like uh, billions of items like eBay or amazon.com. So we would like a way to represent uh, blue dress. Okay, so we have, and the classic way to search blue dress. So it was based on, on keyword search. Uh, if, you, if some of you are familiar with TFIDF and BM25, different algorithms. But if we have in our catalog, if you will uh, type the query uh, blue dress, and we have in our catalog something that is semantically close, but it is, we don't have it in the description like navy dress. 
uh, we will get poor results. So we will not get like the navy dress. So this is this is an explanation. This is a huge topic. I think uh, Nvidia CEO mentioned it as one of their uh, uh, focus uh, in terms of applications. And here you can see, so they use in this benchmark, again, AWS published it a few months ago, they use 12 R5 instances. Yeah, I know there are newer instances, but these, these are the instances that they published. And uh, in order to support this scale, they use 12 uh, nodes, 12 instances. Um, and as you can see on the right side, it took approximately the P90 was 12 millisecond. Okay, so please remember this number, 12. And uh, yeah, so instead of 12 instances, we run it with only one uh, instance and you can see the performance. And again, it, it is fully scalable, scalable. And this is just the first generation that is fully working on, on the cloud. <clears throat> Okay, so how it can be integrated into your uh, uh, workload or application. So as I mentioned, uh, the first gen is uh, in production. Uh, next quarter, we will launch the second gen, which approximately should be 10x compared to the first uh, gen. If you are a low level programmer, you, you can build uh, with, C with uh, CSDK uh, or uh, high level programmer. So we have our own. Uh, um, subset of Python, we call it LPython. Uh, it's a GitHub repository um, and you can connect it. And if you don't want to write uh, functions from scratch, so you can leverage different uh, libraries, vector math library, or the, uh, the last option is to, to consume it as, a, as an application, connect uh, with the different plugins, integrations with uh, Elastic, uh, open search and uh, Webiet, but we have like uh, other applications as well. So if you are probably asking yourself, how do you connect this infrastructure into your uh, workload or into your uh, VPC? So we have a data center in, in the US, North California region, which connected direct with the uh, uh, direct connect. Uh, we are cloud agnostic, so you can integrate it into uh, different uh, cloud providers like uh, Azure uh, with Azure VMs. You can consume it uh, similarly to Azure VMs or a GC, Google uh, Cloud Engine. Okay, so this is this is a quick demo. What, what we are seeing here. So we preloaded um, a vector data set, which is uh, fairly popular, uh, Deep1B, published by uh, Yandex. And we have like 1 billion records. Again, um, app relevant application, if you are an e-commerce company or any other uh, different example. So we have 1 billion records, uh, each record with 96 features. And if we have these type of, uh, uh, these size of records, so we usually don't need like a query by query. We will usually, uh, we usually need uh, like hundreds of queries. So we will run three scenarios, like one query. What is the performance for one query? What will be the performance for uh, 100 queries and 1000? Let's see if it's work. Okay, it's working great. Okay, so you can see up there six millisecond per one query. And for 100 queries, you can see 160. So it's one millisecond, 1.6 uh, millisecond per query. But if you are running 1000 query, we're getting close to 1.1 millisecond per query. This is unprecedented uh, performance. And again, this is by leveraging the, the in-memory compute. The data is, is inside the compute and you are leveraging the capabilities of uh, in-memory compute.
Okay, cool. So this is the bonus slide. Uh, we are in advanced discussion with uh, one of the leading cloud providers uh, to build and develop the, the first purpose-built infrastructure for uh, LLM inference and training. There are different challenges in terms of the architecture in terms of the architecture, for those of you who are familiar with the architecture of uh, LLM, one of the most significant uh, challenges is the self-attention memory uh, or a different uh, challenge like the context input. Today, it is limited by, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, 32,000 uh, uh, context input tokens. Uh, companies are working on, on different solutions. I saw a paper, but again, this is the known uh, limit. And again, this limit is uh, due to the, uh, as I mentioned, the memory wall and some of the challenges. So this architecture is uh, fully flexible with any number format. Developers, researchers like uh, the Llama, the C uh, implementation of uh, Llama, uh, researchers from Microsoft, full flexibility with the new number formats, again, because it, it is based on the bit level. Full utilization, so all cells are fully utilized, and you can run full GPT. Again, this is the known GPT, G GPT-3, um, uh, with up to 128 tokens in a single model. Um, if I will compare it, again, to based on, on publications in order to, to, to run these type of inference uh, with 175 billion of parameters, you need approximately eight to 10 uh, different uh, GPUs. And the, the third pillar is, is breaking the memory wall, more high bandwidth uh, memory due to the associative compute, uh, which enables uh, higher compute, better performance, lower infrastructure, and so on and so forth. Uh, th thank you very much. Uh, it was a pleasure. Uh, I encourage you, if you would like to build uh, on top of our uh, platform, so you have uh, Searchium AI, free theories available. If you would like to uh, build your own application, so uh, you can uh, use the GitHub L Python. And uh, any questions, feel free to send me an email. And we have the magic book, so you can send us a request and we can try to send you this uh, nice magic book. Thank you very much.